So yeah, welcome everybody today. Uh, I'm really glad that we can meet like this. Um, it's obviously nice to be able to do these kinds of things in person, but in the lack of doing that, based on the fact that we're all across Canada, uh, it's nice to get together online and just have some kind of a, a structure around uh, pursuing the 12 steps and kind of walking forward in that journey. Um, so yeah, we have a good group of people here today, um, and I look forward to kind of walking beside you in this kind of process. Um, for myself, my name is Robbie, and um, I joined Regroup uh, in June of 2020, I believe. So it's been two years um, that I've been a part of it, two and a half years. I um, previously, I guess, realized I had an addiction back in 2011, actually. Um, all my life, I, I'd been actually a missionary kid uh, growing up. And so I was raised in a family that worked in the countries of Pakistan and later Thailand. Um, and from a very early age, I had a friend who showed me pornography and talked about sexual um, things, but I'd never been kind of talked to about that as a, as a youth or a child. And so it became like a very shameful thing that I couldn't tell anybody about. And so in secret, I discovered masturbation and, and I found my own pornography and it's kind of grew and grew and snowballed. Um, it kind of led me to kind of avoid any kind of relationships. And so I got all the way to university without any kind of like dating. And then when I did date in the, in university, it kind of came to light with potential um, people that I was with relationship partners. Um, and that was very hurtful to them. And it ended up ending those relationships. Um, and so eventually to make a long story short, in 2011, I realized I had a problem. Um, and the church that I was at, uh, they had a ministry uh, that was just just been started up around addictions. And it was primarily focused on drugs and alcohol at the time and providing support to individuals who struggled with that. Uh, but I joined and I said, hey, I think I have a problem. But you know, you don't actually address sexual addiction right now. Is there a way that I can still come and learn about recovery? And they said, yes, that's great. And they, they actually added me onto their leadership team soon after. And so I started leading a, a breakout group specifically related to sexual addiction, uh, because for me, pornography and masturbation was a daily part of my life um, that I couldn't control. And so that's kind of how I came into the whole recovery scene. Um, and I did that as a single man, but it did not perfectly go away. I did end up meeting uh, my future wife, and I was able to not... Um, while knowing her look at pornography or masturbate, I was able to stop as of the time I met her, which was about six years into my recovery. Um, so I was happy about that. But fast forward up to 2020, um, the marriage that I had with my wife was not going well. I was still very much in my mind addicted in the sense that I would compare her to other women um, and that I would um, yeah, just judge her based on what I thought she should do sexually or what we um, there's just so many images in my mind, things in my mind that poisoned our ability to have a, a proper marriage and relationship. So uh, that led me to regroup uh, because our marriage almost ended at that point. Uh, but thankfully through, I guess, a renewed focus on understanding that just how deep the addiction went, um, we've been able to save our marriage. And, and I, again, I'm on a much better path now than I was before in terms of um, really addressing, you know, even just the way that I look at other women, the way that I think of other women, um, the interactions I have with them. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell that has led me to today. Uh, I did just recently complete the 12 steps uh, according to the book that we use here at Regroup, uh, which is by Doug Weiss. Um, I had previously done the steps about six times with the other group that I attended. Um, and they, it was really helpful. And it just made a huge life change in my life. But I did do it again recently based on the kind of renewed uh, focuses that I had then. So, so that's just a little bit about me. I just wanted to be able to share that. Um, I really respect the journey that all of you are on, uh, that we are on. Um, I'm very much not out of the woods in terms of my addiction. Um, and really, in my opinion, you know, the amount of years that I put into my addiction, that's going to be how long it will take to really get um, complete kind of purity and kind of separation from it. So, so that's just a little bit about me as a bit of a background. Um, so moving into now what we're going to be doing together. Um, yeah, the, the 12 steps is a process. It's a, it's a, it's 12 steps that were created by originally a group called Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, and it's become quite popular. Um, you know, the 12 steps themselves are not magical. And, you know, the book that we'll be going through together, this, you know, steps to freedom book is not magical either. There's nothing like there's no magic bullet or magic fix through it that will just kind of cure you. Um, but it is a, a 
a system of disciplines and work that we can put in that does have the opportunity to um, help us to kind of grow and, and and create life change in our life. The 12 steps really are, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, they're a lot of hard work. <laughs> they're rarely what you're ever going to feel like doing on a given day. Uh, and I really like to liken it to a marathon. Um, it's it's kind of like that. Like you will go through stages where it's easier and harder and you may find yourself in a bit of a place where you're at a plateau of like, okay, I can do this, but then it'll get hard again. So like really it's not something that is to be trifled with, uh, but in doing so, it really offers a lot of um, opportunities for just growth, like I mentioned before. Uh, really, the 12 steps, the main purpose is to clean house. It's, it's to get rid of the shame and the guilt and the things in our life that are holding us down so that we can create new disciplines and establish new routines in life that are healthy, that don't involve mm -hmm. pornography, sexual addiction um, in, in all of its kind of aspects and ways. So um, so really, I, I like to say that with the 12 steps, you get out of it what you put into it. Um, it's very much a self-led, self-guided process. Um, and so I would encourage you to treat it like a journaling exercise. Be really open and honest when you're going through the book, when you're writing in the the blanks that the book provides for all the kind of answers, and the, the questions, and then gives you like an answer part. So just treat it like a journal, write down everything that comes to mind, be completely brutally honest with what you write down um, and don't hide anything. So, um, so then just talking a little bit about the explanation of what, you know, participants like yourself are responsible for. Um, it's your responsibility to complete the 12 steps. Um, it's not, there's no part of it where I kind of do that work for you or anybody else that does that work for you. Um, this is a self-led um, guided process. Uh, my goal with each of our sessions as we meet, uh, today's just the intro session, but as of February 4th will be our first proper session. Um, and in that, in each of those sessions, the whole goal is for me to crack the book with you guys, look at that chapter and demystify it for you. So that means, getting rid of any kind of confusion points that you may have. Um, and so I welcome you to look through the book while we're talking and just look ahead and just make sure you feel comfortable with what you're then going to turn around and do over the next three or four weeks after that. So um, also to mention, there's no hard rule as to what's going to happen if you lag behind, if, if you can't keep up with what the rest of the group is doing or um, you know, it, there's no, there's not going to be any kind of like a checkup process where if you haven't done the last week's last month's work, you can't come to this session. There's no way for me to check that. And that's not what I'm positioning myself to do in, in, in a role as kind of a facilitator of this. Um, so you're welcome to come and I'm not going to specifically ask you kind of where you're at. And, and, and that's kind of up to you. This is a session that's made to, again, help you just demystify each of the steps that you're going to go through. Um, and so everybody's going to be on their own kind of timeline. I would encourage you to keep up with it. I think it'll give you the most kind of enthusiasm to know that you're, you know, at the same level of progression as, as other people are. Uh, but that's going to be up to you at the end of the day. So um, it's not mandatory to attend, uh, but the goal obviously is to do so and to, you know, be done the 12 steps as of January, 2024. So that's, you know, if everything goes to plan, that's when you would be finishing your step 12. So, yeah. Um, and also just to say out of the gate, um, I'm not going to be able to sponsor anybody in this group. So we're going to talk a lot about sponsors because I find it's a very important thing and I'm going to try and explain what that role is like. Um, but it is going to come down to you to find somebody maybe within your small group that you're a part of in regroup, maybe somebody in your community, um, whoever that is, uh, there will be a little bit of work involved with finding that person, but I already do sponsor a few people and just with other responsibilities in my life, I can't do that right now. So, yeah. Um, so talking about a sponsor, so a sponsor, um, I, I sent you all an info session sheet, um, about sponsors, uh, a four page one, by the way, uh, last night. So there's lots of info in there. Uh, but really a sponsor is kind of like a super account accountability partner. So in my mind, I have a distinction when I think of an accountability partner and a sponsor. An accountability partner is someone that I'm roughly on the same stage of life in that we're proceeding together in parallel routes towards the goal of recovery. A sponsor is somebody that I've kind of, I've given them the right and the the strength, the power to like call me on my crap kind of thing. And to like be really upfront and, and kind of be involved in the nitty gritty of what I'm doing in my recovery. So as it pertains to this 12 step group, you know, they're the person in my mind. Uh, and this is the way I've always done it where for every step I meet with them 
to talk about what I learned through that step. So I, I, I meet, met, met, meet with my sponsor 12 times over a 12 step journey process. And so step one, I do the work that I meet with my sponsor, tell them about the, the main points that come from that step two, I do the same just all the way through every single 12 step. Um, again, that's going to be up to you to kind of decide if that's the way you want to do it. Classically, according to the, to the AA 12 steps, um, step five and step nine are the very important ones that you want to do with somebody. Um, but I've always found in every set of steps that I've done that it just means so much more if I, um, come clean to another person, if I'm upfront and honest with them in terms of the ugliest things in my life and the things that I've done and the things that have happened to me, um, it just really has a way of creating healing like nothing else kind of does. So, um, and the scriptures that talk about how it's important for us to confess to God, but it's also important for us to confess to other people. And so I really believe this is a practical way to kind of work that out. So, um, but at the end of the day, it's your choice. So I'm not going to be following up with you and figure out who's got a sponsor, who doesn't have a sponsor. That's not my job. I'm not here to be a, a check-in person for anybody on this call. So th this is a, a self-led study. Um, so what will the next 12 sessions look like? Um, we'll be meeting on the first Saturday of every month uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So there's an ongoing uh, invitation that you've all received for that. Um, and that will always be the same link. So you should already have that in your email and I'll just keep coming uh, every time. I won't have to send it a new one each time. Um, I'll be giving a snapshot of what that step is all about um, and inviting you to kind of crack the book open while we're talking on that particular day um, and just familiarize, familiarize yourself with the material, what's coming up, um, just so that when you hit the book later that day or later that week, um, you just know it's going to be there and you're not afraid or, or kind of confused about anything that's kind of written there. So. Um, just a few miscellaneous suggestions. I would suggest setting time twice a week to work on step work. Um, that way, if you miss one, you're probably still going to be okay and be able to keep up with it. I know for me, when I completed this step work, um, I actually did do the process over about a year and a quarter process. And I had set a weekly time on Saturday mornings to do um, my step work. And I managed to complete it in about a year and a quarter, a year and a third. So, you know, ideally, if you do six or seven sessions in a month, um, you'll get the work all done so that you're done by the next month kind of thing. So, um, but it is important to, if you are going to be using a sponsor to go ahead and set those dates that you're going to meet with the sponsor so that that part doesn't lag behind. Um, cause it is nice to kind of like close the book on a chapter and then move on to the next step. Um, so yeah, so we'll be meeting, meeting together, talking about the material. I would encourage you to, yeah, set up but it, that's, again, going to be up to you. I'm not going to ask anybody what is your arrangement for getting the work done. That's completely up to you. But in terms of what's worked for me, that's how I've done it. I set alarms in my phone for when it's my step work time, uh, and that's how I made myself do it. Um, and the goal is to complete that step in a three to, few, three to four week period between each session um, so that you're ready and kind of done the last session, the last step when by the time the the first Saturday, Saturday of the month kind of rolls around. Um, yeah, in terms of reporting to your sponsor, I would encourage that you kind of like I've set out a particular date of the week that we're going to meet to talk about these steps. I would encourage you to set a time with your sponsor that you're going to meet every month just ahead of that so that you can make sure that that always works for you. Um, in terms of what you share with a sponsor, the way I did it um, and I found is the most practical is... In every step, when you're going through it, uh, once you're done the work, you go back through that chapter and you kind of take a pen with you and you put a star beside the seven questions that you thought were the hardest for you, like you kind of cut to the core and kind of hurt, hurt a little bit, to, but you, you know, you, you were honest with the answer and you wanted to share that with somebody um, or seven, you know, seven things that either were really hard to answer or were really kind of like aha moment items. Um, there's just not time for you to read out the whole chapter, the whole step to your sponsor. So you have to highlight what were the most important things in that um, and then share just that kind of material. So I'll just show you a peek really quickly about what, you know, a step looked like for me when I shared it with my sponsor, um, just as an example. So this is just a, a random page on the book and we'll see if it, uh, the background capture thing. Okay. I'll have to set, turn that off for, for next week when we kind of meet together, but basically you just put a star beside a particular question. And if you already have the book, you can, you can look at them right now if you want to, too. Um, but just choose the highlights of what, you know, you kind of did in that step and report that to your sponsor. I always find if there's anything that I 
don't feel like sharing, that's exactly what you do need to share. So if any of the questions really kind of made you feel a little bit icky about yourself and you realized, oh yeah, that's actually, that's not good that I've been operating in that way. That's exactly what you need to share with your sponsor. So I would encourage you to be um, brutally honest with that sponsor person, um, especially when it comes to step four and five, when you make a list of all the things that you've done that has hurt other people and that has hurt you, like there's going to be some really personal, really hurtful stuff in that list. Um, so the sponsor person has to be someone that you can trust, um, has to be someone that's going to be what I call shockproof, and they're not going to turn around and call the police after you have your conversation with them. Um, and they're not going to, you know, yeah, create more of more pain out of you just sharing it with them. So, um, so yeah, so those are the main things that I wanted to kind of just state right out of the gate. Um, Again, I think it's really awesome what you guys are doing. Um, I, I, I do really believe in the power of the 12 steps. Again, not because they're magical in and of themselves. They're not. There's nothing magical about this process compared to any other recovery process. So it's not about some kind of brand success. Um, it's just really, I find the work and the dedication and the discipline that it takes to complete the 12 steps is something that can build such like better habits in in my it, it has built much better habits in my life and i believe it can help others too so it's basically just all the work and all the accountability that goes into the 12 steps that can really be life-changing um in the long run so that's why i like the 12 steps and why um i've found a lot of help and a lot of um hope through doing them because it it, it, it does that it cleans out cleans the slate of everything that you're shameful and guilty of you share it with someone you share it with god and then you put it to rest and you don't go back back there that's the whole idea and then you kind of commit to this is how i'm gonna how i'm gonna live moving forward in kind of the latter steps so that's really what the 12 steps are all about and again every week i'll be sharing with you what the highlight is of that step um things to watch out for things to not get stuck by um that's what i find is often the biggest danger with the 12 steps is people get stuck on a particular question they don't think that they know how to answer it or they uh, feel uncomfortable or they're not willing to be fully open and honest. Um, and so I want to do everything I can to help you get unstuck if something happens. So the WhatsApp group that we have as well, similarly, if there's any struggles, your questions you're struggling with, even after our session, feel free to message in there. Um, hopefully we'll all be on the same like point in the steps. So anything that you share, there's no bad, no dumb questions. So just ask a question in that. Um, if you have any kind of questions and, and others or myself or Kevin will answer that based on what they've done. So, yeah. So I think I'll leave that there. That's been enough talking um, and we'll open it up to some questions. Uh, just 